If you have spent five minutes online reading about or listening to Sheila Jackson Lee, then you will probably need no introduction to this video. My name is Andrew Michelle, and I am a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and I want to apologize to everyone. I want the whole world to know that I am sorry, I am so sorry, that Sheila Jackson Lee is a member of the Adventist Church. But I do believe that I have been blessed by being born and raised a Seventh-day Adventist. And while it is likely that there could be more than one reason for this apology, for the purpose of this video, only one reason is necessary. And this picture right here says it all. Publicly posted right here on her Facebook page, she says that she is proud. She is proud to support and stand with and congratulate an organization that kills helpless little children. I joined with my Democratic congressional colleagues in a Democratic-controlled House of Representatives in celebrating and congratulating Planned Parenthood and Dr. Wynne for her leadership. And I am delighted that Planned Parenthood is standing in the fight. I'm Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, and I'm standing in the fight with them. Out of her own mouth, she says that she is delighted. Sheila Jackson Lee is so pro-abortion that she consistently scores 100% for the National Abortion Rights Action League. To give you just one example, the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act was legislation introduced that if an attempt to perform an abortion fails and if the child survives, if the child survives, then the doctors and hospital staff are mandated by law to provide the same care as would be provided provided to any other child born alive. In other words, a child survives an abortionist's best efforts to kill her. The child is alive and breathing outside of the mother's body. This legislation would ensure that this baby would be cared for just like any other newborn baby. However, Lee voted against this legislation. She voted that if you try to kill a child in the womb and it is born alive, then it's okay to just let the child die. And that is just one example. Lee is notorious for supporting and defending unfettered, unrestricted access to kill children even until birth. And as we see here, even if they are born alive, she still supports killing them. When the Seventh-day Adventist Church was founded in the 19th century, Adventist pioneers loudly and publicly condemned abortion as child murder. They publicly condemned other denominations for showing support for abortion. They published anti-abortion sermons from other Protestants in our own official journals, and they showed open and unashamed support for anti-abortion legislation. Even historians today, like Professor Marvin Olasky and Professor Joseph De La Pena, when writing about the 19th century anti-abortion sentiments, they cite from Adventists because their opposition and condemnation were so strong and well known. And yet the situation today is so bad that a woman who openly legislates to murder innocent children is brought to an Adventist university, brought into the Adventist church, and allowed to speak in the pulpit on Sabbath morning and is congratulated, honored, and given a trophy. Go ahead and listen to this. In the course of my work, I don't know where God will take me. But I do believe that I have been blessed by being born and raised a Seventh-day Adventist. Did you notice that? The woman who celebrates abortion is blessed to be born. And to make it worse, just recently, the Adventist Church hosted the 17th Annual Religious Liberty Dinner in Washington, D.C. Wow. Fighting for the freedom of conscience and religious liberty for all people is not an option. And they chose as their keynote speaker, Sheila Jackson Lee, who Adventist news and media claim is famous for championing the rights of women and children. That is a lie. Ellen White and Adventist pioneers were so strong against slavery that if you so much as even voiced pro-slavery views that you should be disfellowshipped and kicked out of the church. But today, church members who defend child murder are celebrated and honored as keynote speakers at our own religious liberty dinners. This is absolutely reprehensible. You can go right now to their photo page, scroll down and see for yourself. It's right here on their official photo page, President Ted Wilson standing there smiling with this woman. We Adventists tell the world that you should eat vegetarian, don't drink, don't smoke, don't gamble. We tell the world that Jesus did not engage in violence and Christians should, you should refrain from violence. But we honor people 
we honor people who promote violence. Adventists tell the world that Bible prophecy will be fulfilled, which will lead to the religious persecution and the dreaded death decree, while at the very same time, at the very same time, openly celebrating people who literally legislate the death decree to innocent children. And they do this in the name of religious liberty. If some pedophile tried to enact laws to rape children, Ted Wilson would never be seen in a photo with them, but that's child rape. If you make laws to murder them and not rape them, then you get a picture with the smiling president. Don't miss that. The General Conference and President's Office, just like every other organization in government, are very careful what pictures are approved and released of the president. And check this out. Lincoln Steed, right here, is the editor of Liberty Magazine and the director for the church's Religious Liberty Department. Go ahead and listen to what he said here about this dinner. And we had a, we had a very special speaker this time. It was Sheila Jackson Lee, a Democrat, but that's immaterial. What's more important to us is Seventh-day Adventist legislator from Texas, a long-standing uh, legislator of great uh, maturity and, and involvement in many things. I remember... Only a few days ago, watching on C-SPAN, as she, I think she was on the Judiciary Committee on that viewing, and she was holding forth about the uh, severe threats to our democracy at the moment. And I mm -hmm. thought, man, she's really hitting the spot. She's speaking up where many others are constrained. Yeah. So we were very happy to have her as our guest speaker, and she did a great job, of course, mentioning her Adventist background, but she, she got very quickly into broader religious liberty issues. Great maturity. She's really hitting the spot. She's speaking up. This is the editor of the Liberty magazine, and he's just gushing with praise. Listen here to the tone of his voice. And so I, I, I found it just gripping to listen to this very influential legislator speaking out at our own 17th religious liberty dinner. My Adventist church is so sick that the director of religious liberty can barely contain his pride that this woman is their guest of honor. The official Seventh-day Adventist manual states right here in black and white that members can be disfellowshipped for denial of the faith and the fundamentals of the gospel, violation of the law of God, willful and habitual falsehood, abuse of children and the vulnerable, physical violence, and adherence to a disloyal movement or organization. According to our own church manual, Sheila Jackson Lee, she have been disciplined and kicked out of our church long ago for multiple violations. This woman is a disgrace to our church and her exalted, celebrated status is a disgrace to church leadership. The sad and crazy irony is that no group of people have done more damage to the principle of religious liberty than leaders of my Seventh-day Adventist church. Now, I know that sounds like a very strong statement, but take a moment and stop and think about it. Adventists are famous famous for so zealously promoting religious liberty. Churches take up yearly offerings for this work. We have special speakers who come in every year and preach about this. Entire departments of the church at many different levels are entirely dedicated to the religious liberty issue. If you type in religious liberty, two of the top 10 search recommendations are for Adventists. What makes our influence so bad is that we teach many wonderful truths. We teach a lot of truth about religious liberty, but a Amidst all of this truth is the horrible error that violently killing an innocent child is a sacred right that must be protected and defended. We Adventists are directly responsible for poisoning society and culture with this absolutely reprehensible and satanic idea. So I want to apologize to the watching world. I'm so sorry that you see this in my church. God will not be mocked and I hope and pray that you will live to see the day when God punishes my church for supporting this abomination.